So oftentimes I have a tendency of going online and reading about fragrances where the presentation looks really, really cool. And sometimes I'll end up noticing that people start comparing them to other really popular fragrances. And when that happens, sometimes I kind of feel like I have to put my own nose on it to see if any of those claims are valid. Well, in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the brand Mint. This one is called Neon Night. No reviews for this one online that I was able to see. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance from, believe it or not, 2016. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I tell you all about this fragrance by the brand Mint or M period INT, the fragrance is called Neon Night. I wanna start things off by saying, if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it, hit the bell icon and give it a thumbs up if you take something of value from today's episode. Now, this fragrance was composed by Hamid Merati Kashani and he has done a ton of fragrances for Parfum de Marly, Leighton, Leighton, and exclusive, Oriana, Percival, the list goes on and on. If you're interested in checking this fragrance out, you may do so at Fragrapedia House. That's where I got my bottle. All of the links are gonna be down below. This is not a sponsored video. I didn't get paid anything for this video and those are not affiliate links either. So the link to Fragrapedia House, I'm not making any money off of that. I just wanted to be transparent with you guys. Here we have a fragrance that has bergamot, tea, lily of the valley, peony, jasmine, guayac wood, sandalwood, amber, so on and so so forth, I saw online, a lot of people were comparing this one to, you, you know what it is. If you heard the note breakdown, you probably have a good idea of what it is. Silver Mountain Water by Creed. And I said, I gotta try it for myself. I love Silver Mountain Water. As a matter of fact, my scent of the day today was Mephisto by Casa Morati. Also gets compared to Silver Mountain Water. So I'm gonna tell you how I think this stacks up. If it is different, in what way is it different? Let's start things off with the presentation. So right in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get that tea note. Now tea, whether it be black tea or white tea or oolong or whatever, it usually gives off this very calm, soothing and serene vibe that is very meditative. And I do have a lot of tea-based fragrances. Of course, there are quite a few on the designer side of things. Eau Parfumé Eau Té Vert by Bulgari is one of them. And I know Floraiku has a lot of tea-based fragrances too. I think One Umbrella for Two is the first fragrance that comes to mind. So in this fragrance, I'm getting the tea because it's something that I've smelled before in other fragrances. But I gotta be honest, I am getting really strong Silver Mountain Water vibes. Now, this one is different, right? So this is not a direct inspiration or anything like that. I'm basically saying that if you are a fan of that DNA, you're gonna find something really similar here, but with its own unique personality. So the question is, how is this one different? In my opinion, this one, and I think this is kind of a compliment to the fragrance, it's not as abstract as Silver Mountain Water. Now here's what I mean by that. A lot of times when people smell Silver Mountain Water and you ask them to describe it, they have a hard time describing it, right? A lot of people say it has kind of like an inky smell or an inky vibe, meaning it smells like ink. And that's not what I'm getting from this. You know, it's funny because that inky, staticky, like Ambroxan-like vibe that I get from Silver Mountain Water, I actually don't get from this fragrance. As a matter of fact, the ingredients that are in here smell a bit more realistic. I feel like with Silver Mountain Water, everything, it smells great, very refreshing, but it's kind of jumbled together. Here, I feel like you can pinpoint certain ingredients and I am getting the clean white florals, right? The jasmine, the lily of the valley, and I'm getting the tea with the bergamot. And as I smell it, I can already pick up on the musk that is in the dry down, very clean, smooth, billowy musk. And the times that I've worn this, I also got that vibe too. The amber is not sweet or balsamic or resinous or anything like that. And Gayak wood, yeah, sure. I've smelled Gayak wood in a few other fragrances, Gayak 10 by Le Labo. This one, I'm not getting strong Gayak wood vibes from, but I am getting the citrus, the clean white florals, the tea note, and that billowy musk. This is a beautiful 
fragrance. Is it a solid alternative to Silver Mountain Water? 100%. Another thing you have to keep in mind as well with the perfumer being Hamid Merati Kashani, when you're taking a look at Parfum de Marley fragrances that he's composed, Leighton or Percival or Leighton Exclusif, these are fragrances that last such a long time on skin. And he's also composed every single fragrance for his wife's brand, which is called Fabrica de la Musa, those are all incredibly long lasting too. Longevity is here, freshness is here. This is going to be a signature scent type of a fragrance for me for work. I'm so excited to wear this in the months to come. Clean, elegant, professional, refreshing, super long lasting, 100% a hit in a must, must try. I feel like I've kind of neglected this one given the fact that it's been out now for like seven years or something like that, right? So definitely worth checking out. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, in terms of the uniqueness, I feel like it does bear a lot of similarities to Silver Mountain Water or Mephisto by Casa Morati. And of course, there's other fragrances that would kind of fall within that, that wheelhouse, but I think it smells amazing. It's a bit more realistic, not as abstract. Try it for yourself. Longevity on this one, 10 plus hours, which is phenomenal. The projection for this one is also very good. It projected beyond an arm's length for about an hour and a half. It didn't start to sit closer to the skin until about that six to seven hour mark and it became a skin scent at that 10 hour mark. Versatility is great. I think it is kind of masculine leaning but I can see it being a unisex fragrance to be honest especially with the more realistic white florals that are in here. I could see a woman wearing it very confidently. I think this one would work really well in the hotter weather. I think this one is perfect for anybody of any age and I think this one can be worn formally or casually. In terms of the presentation, really, really cool. It has this sort of really large magnetic cap and the bottle itself, it does have kind of a utilitarian design to it. I mean, it fits really, really nicely. Definitely check it out if you can. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you are a fan of Silver Mountain Water, you're looking for a fragrance that gives off a kind of a similar vibe to Silver Mountain Water, a bit more realistic, less abstract, unisex, and really long lasting. Check out Neon Night by Mint. I have a feeling you're really gonna enjoy it. You can get your bottle at Fragrapedia House. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon and give this video a thumbs up. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.